Now we know today is about honoring exceptional women in our community, but we do not want to lose sight of the compelling reason we are here, to support the work of the American Lung Association. It's the lead organization that's working to save lives by improving lung health and preventing lung disease. Your generous support will help the American Lung Association continue fighting for air through scientific research, publication, and advocacy. And we'd like to ask Robin Grant to come forward now to share with us. She, as I said, is the American Lung Association Regional Council President and a 2008 Woman of Distinction. Robin has a special guest with us today who has felt personally the effects of lung disease. Robin? Thank you. As president of the American Lung Association, I was asked to speak to you today about the impact of lung cancer on women. And immediately, I could think of no better way to illustrate the outrageousness and incongruity of this problem than to introduce you to my friend, Jenny White, who is here today to share with you her own story. Jenny. Thank you so much. You know, when Robin asked me to come and share my story with you today, um, I wasn't really expecting all of you. <laughs> so um, just so you know, table four, I've selected you as my naked people. So I, I feel comfortable. OK, we're good. <laughs> she got choked up. <laughs> <laughs> now, not knowing me, you know, you might be asking yourself, um, you know, why did I start smoking? Um, how long have I been smoking? That type of thing. I mean, even people that know me have questioned um, that part. And I could respond by saying, you know, I really wish that, that I could have stopped smoking. But the truth is, in order to stop smoking, I would have had to have started smoking. I am a non-smoking lung cancer survivor. Um, I'm one of the lucky few whose cancer was actually di diagnosed in stage one. And I say one of the lucky few because only 15% of all lung cancers are caught in stage one. Typically, they're found um, by mistake. They're found on a chest x-ray from an unrelated uh, injury. They're done before a surgery. Uh, my particular case was found um, basically when I went to the doctor to get a chest x-ray to make sure I didn't have chemically induced pneumonia from a, a home cleaning accident. My accident, uh, it occurred in December of 09 when I decided I was going to clean a bathroom. And I know like many of you, we're busy, I don't want to waste any time, so I was going to get my two best tools for cleaning bathrooms, bleach and scrubbing bubbles. Sounds good, right? Yeah, yeah, evidently not really a good idea. Because um, by the sound of your response, many of you know that when you combine bleach and ammonia, um, it's uh, really toxic. Some of the rest of you, like me, maybe you, you, you didn't know. Well, I found out that um, it's really not good because I gassed myself. And um, you might say fortunately because that's what ultimately sent me to my doctor who ordered a chest x-ray. And the results were kind of that mixed, mixed bag. It was good news and bad news. Uh, I didn't have chemically induced pneumonia. But they did see a nodule on the right upper lobe of my lung and um, went ahead and did a PET scan came back negative, and because I didn't have any risk factors, i.e. I was a non-smoker, uh, protocol required that, or suggested that we just watch it with a series of CT scans over two years. If the nodule doesn't grow, then it's just considered benign, and I was sure it was benign because I didn't smoke, right? So um, after three CT scans over a period of nine months, uh, the, the nodule had grown by 30 percent. So I um, needed to have a biopsy done. So I went to a, cardio, a, a thoracic surgeon who did, vi who did video assisted thoracic surgery to do a biopsy. You know, I went in feeling pretty good because again, you know, it's going to be benign. Come on. Um, it wasn't. It came back as a stage 1A adenocarcinoma. Good news is it was lung primary and no lymph nodes involved. So with the resection removal of my right upper lobe, I'm considered cancer free. Which Thank you. Um, 
Unfortunately, I now have to claim and admit that um, house cleaning saved my life. <laughs> so, you know, like, like everybody else, I wasn't supposed to get cancer. You know, nobody's supposed to get cancer. I had lived a, a clean life. I exercised. I ate right. I didn't smoke. Um, you know, lung cancer? Are you, are you serious? Um, but as I, I went through the process and did more reading, I soon found out that lung cancer occurs in 80% of people who have stopped smoking or like me who have never smoked. So 80% of all lung cancer cases are those people. This surprised me, 80%. 25% um, uh, excuse me, over 25,000 women who have never smoked will be diagnosed with cancer, lung cancer this year. And lung cancer now claims lives of more women each year than breast, ovarian, and cerv cervical cancers combined. Lung cancer is still the leading cause of cancer death in every ethnic group. And cancer, lung cancer research still receives the least amount of federal funding. In 2010, the federal government committed $218 million for lung cancer research, $439 million for prostate cancer research, and $1 billion for breast cancer. Now, I don't want to take anything away from, from these cancer research. You know, it's all very, very important. I just want to see lung cancer get its fair share. In closing, lung cancer is still the second leading cause of death in the United States. With other cancer, survival rates have improved, but the survival rate of cancer is still very low because so few cases are diagnosed at an early stage when the cancer is most curable. I am thankful to be one of the lucky few who is early diagnosed. I leave you with a quote from my husband who was able to join us here today, Kent White, he's in the back. Last year at Thanksgiving, he was asked what he was most thankful for in 2010. Carefully thought about it, and he goes, bleach and ammonia. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Oh, that's great.